Welcome to Basic Education for Adults Federal Reports. My name is Cindy Wilson and I'm a Policy Associate here at the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. Before we get started with this brief presentation, it may be helpful if you have a copy of your Federal Report found in OGMS from last year. This report complies with the year-end reporting requirements for adult and family literacy programs and they are necessary for our office to fulfill the National Reporting System NRS, requirements. These statistical, narrative, and financial reports are also a requirement for Title II of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or WIOA. And additionally, these reports provide us with critical information about your project's success, impact, and the needs for training and technical assistance. Please note that these reports are due each year on September 15th. There are three sections to the report. First is the narrative. This is where you have an opportunity to describe your implementation of the programming in your grant application and the results of that implementation. Additionally, you will need to respond to questions pertaining to specifically funded projects you had in the past year. The second is data quality section. In this section, you will rate your program in four areas based on acceptable, superior, or exemplary data collection. Finally, you will find Finally, you will fill out the financial status reports for your basic and EL Civics grants. These reports are to be signed, scanned, and uploaded as an attachment in OGMS, with the originals kept on file at your agency. The narrative section is pretty self-explanatory. You will just need to answer the questions in the text box. As you fill out the narrative section, it will be helpful to have the outcomes targets submitted in OGMS during the grant process of the previous year, along with this year's Table 4 Outcomes Found in Waivers Plus. Now let's take a few minutes to look at each of the additional sections. Data Quality Standards Checklist Data quality standards identify the policies, processes, and materials that states and local programs must have to collect valid and reliable data for NRS reporting. These standards define the characteristics of high-quality data collection systems. In this section, you will use the checklist to rate your implementation of the four NRS data quality standards for CASAS assessment, waivers plus data collection, and reporting procedures and local data analysis. The four quality standards are data foundation and structure. This addresses whether the local program has a structure for collecting quality data that meets the state's assessment policy and guidelines. This standard measures whether the program implements policies for assessment, follow-up, and goal setting, if the program staff knows the policies, and whether local providers are working to collect accurate and reliable student data. Data collection and verification measures whether the program collects data according to the state assessment policy and guidelines. Ensuring reliable and valid data. Whether data are collected in a timely manner. Systematically checked for errors. And whether the provider has a process for verifying the validity of the data. Data analysis and reporting addresses whether the provider has a system for analyzing and reporting data, including appropriate databases and software, ensuring the reports are used regularly to check for errors and missing data, and to meet state needs, and whether reports are useful for state and local staff for program management and improvement. Staff development addresses whether the provider has systems for professional development of local staff on data collection, analysis, and use. Ensuring the programs have provided training on data collection, measures, assessment, goal setting, and follow-up procedures, whether training is ongoing and continuous, meets the needs of local staff, and is designed to improve data and program quality. Desk audits by State Board and technical assistance and monitoring will authenticate the responses you have made in this section of the report. Now let's look at what the ratings are for the four data quality areas. When filling out the report in OGMS, you will be asked a series of questions pertaining to the four content standards. There are three levels of quality, acceptable, superior, and exemplary. 
NRS requires that providers' policies and procedures conform to at least the superior quality. So let's review the categories. Acceptable. The program meets minimum standards for implementing the essential requirements of Waivers Plus and the State Assessment System. Superior quality. The program goes beyond the minimum to promote high levels of data validity and reliability through regular oversight of data collection methods, ongoing assistance to staff, staff members on Waivers Plus, the State Assessment System, data reporting and issues, and verifying the accuracy of data. Exemplary promotes the highest levels of data validity and reliability. Verifying data is, corrected, is collected accurately from program staff, monitoring data collection and analysis, and has a corrective system to improve data on an ongoing basis. The program's procedures indicate a focus on continuous improvement of quality and accuracy of data. If you were determined by State Board or self-assessment to be out of compliance defined by failure to meet superior standards, you will need to write a brief data quality improvement plan. The plan will address all standards the program did not meet. Describe what new policies or procedures will be put in place to meet the standards, and describe the technical assistance needed to implement the plan. The Basic Education for Adults Office will offer any technical assistance providers need to meet the goal of their improvement plans. Financial Status Reports, or FSRs, for Adult Education and Family Literacy Funds. You will find the template for the FSR report in the Grant Information tab of OGMS. This report should include non-federal adult education and family literacy funds you expended from your basic grant, plus all federal and ABE funding you spent on institutional programs such as jails and prison programs. Here's an example of what the report looks like. You may want to compare your numbers for this year with what your institution submitted, submitted in last year's report. Non -federal in Section A, non-federal expenditures, we encourage that you not go below the amount that was submitted last year, as the state as a whole must keep the same level of maintenance of effort. In the institutional non-federal expenditures section, this is where you would report any funds you spent on ABE programming in jails and prisons. In Section B, Program Income, an example of this would be the $25 collected for ABE courses. Under the Institutionalized Program Income, very few of you report funding in this section, but an example might be if the jail paid the $25 fee. In Section C, Federal Institutionalized Expenditures, again, very few of you report anything in this section, but this would be dollars from your basic grant that are used to support programming in prisons and jails. If you have EL Civics funding, you will also need to complete an FSR for any EL Civics funding. This report follows the same guidelines as the basic grant, with few to none of you reporting funding or income in institutionalized sections. This concludes the presentation on federal, federal year-end reports. Again, we are happy to help in any way. Please um, feel free to contact us at any time, and thank you for your time.